Hello again. Let's study about Python packages. Now a package is a collection of modules and they're in a directory structure. And you can know what you need to know about packages if you learn to import off your current directory. So we're going to be studying that. We'll start by taking a look at the directory structure of our class. And this is not the whole directory structure, but there are some important things here that are important to us to right now because there's Lab 260 packages. That's where we're at. For our example, we're going to be making poker.py there in Lab 260 packages. For that, we want to pick up Lab 140 underscore 4, which is the one that is about cards. That's from the Liz Comprehensions Lab. So you see that it is one towards the root and then one back away from the root and then we find our lab 140 underscore 4. When you do your exercise, you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be working in work here so that you can pick up totaltext.py and use that. But first, let's work on our poker.py. We'll start by looking at our problem in the interpreter itself. You want to be aware that there is in sys, sys.path, and sys.path is a list, a list of strings, each string being a directory in which the import facility will look for any imports you ask for. It looks first in the current directory, and then it looks through Python's regular stuff. Lots of it. Much was deleted here, you'll see. This is set up when you install your Python, or maybe your administrator added something to your Python path environment variable. However, we're going to learn to do it from insider code. So if I put on that path, regular old list, and insert at the zero, that means the first thing on the list, the double dot, that's my parent. That is the symbol for the parent. So that's the parent directory. And given that we are in lab 260 packages, that means I put labs on the path. And it is the first thing. And so it will be the first thing the import facility looks at. I should mention that it's important to do the relative path, not the absolute path, because the absolute path that starts with users Maryland will not work on your computer or hardly anybody's computer. That would be very strange, any computer it worked on. And then there's the second step, and that is just to do the import. Now here I am importing Lab 40 list comprehensions. But because labs is the first thing on my sys.path, it looks in there and it finds that Lab 40 list comprehensions and it is happy. Then because there's a dot, it goes into that directory to find lab140 underscore 4 dot py. You remember that to make something importable, it's got to have a dot py, but that dot py does not appear on the import line. Neither can there be other dots in the name of your module. And here, now you see the reason, because on this import line, dot means go inside the directory. So that would really be wrong to put dots in your file name, and Python won't allow it. OK, now I have succeeded in importing that module. And I can do a dir on it. Notice that I had to put in that whole big long name. And I see there's git cards. So I asked to do a help on it. Whole big long name, even longer. And I see my git cards, and it returns a deck of cards as a list of strings. Well, that'll be useful because I'm making a poker program. So I'm calling git cards, and I'm looking at the first five that come back, and there they are. Now when you have these big line names, this is a good time to use the as keyword. I could import that big long name as cards. Now, that reads very nicely in my module itself. I can read my code. I can see it came from somewhere. I can look and see where it came from. I do not lose my organization by doing that. 
So when I use cards, that get cards, and I'm going to look at the Queen of Hearts, which is the 36th card. Okay, well, that's the theory. But in practice, you want to do it into a module. You want to do that import into a module. You don't just want to do it in your interpreter. And that creates a problem. Here we see my poker.py. And in my poker.py, I must import the sys again. Doing it in the interpreter doesn't do anything permanent. And then on my sys path, I can insert the double dot. And I run that import. And it works like a charm. Perfecto. However, if I go to my labs directory to run my poker.py, and because I'm in my labs directory, in order to run it, I must say lab260 underscore packages slash poker.py, it crashes. I get a module not found error. No module named lab140 list comprehensions. It's important to notice exactly which module it couldn't find. Well, this wasn't even a module. It's the directory. It couldn't find the directory. To see what went wrong, I put in a print statement. Here it is. And I look at the first thing on the path after I think I have inserted the labs directory. Let's take a look. When it runs, it says, no, that's not the labs directory. That's the parent of the labs directory. Because I was in the labs directory when I ran this program. So when I put the double dot, it put the double dot from where I'm running it, not from where the file is that I'm running. That gave me my material management 3 directory. Well, so that's not good. That's not robust. We have a little trick we can apply. Let's look at that. You remember that when we looked at importing our own files, that we needed that magic name attribute that was given to every module when it was imported? Well, also given to every module at import time is a magic file. And that is the whole absolute path of this file where it is. That's just what we need to know. We need to know where this is on this computer. And that's what it tells us. So we're going to use OS path split that file, which gives me a list of two parts, the file path and the file name, the zero with part being the path. And to that, I'm going to join with the double dot, which is the parent of this file, which is that poker file. And that puts labs on our syspath, no matter where I'm doing it from. When I print it out, we see that, yes, there's labs. And the import is successful. Well, that's the story of making a package. Let's take a look at our poker.py and see what we ended up with. We import the sys. You have to do it in every program. And we're going to insert on the sys path at the zero with element this stuff. The magic file, the OS path split of it, the zero with element of that, which is the whole path minus the file name. Zero with is just the path. And then we're tacking on the double dot, which is the parent of where this file is. And we're putting that on our syspath. And when I print it out, we see we've got just what we wanted. That gives us labs. No matter where we run it, we get labs. And now we can do that import. But I am importing it as cards, because I like how that types and reads better than this. Let's look at our main. Here we are setting up our deck, the deck. As cards get cards. So now we have a list of the cards in order. We'll ask the random module to shuffle them in place. Now our deck is shuffled. Now here's a neat little trick. This ordinals tuple of strings, first, second, third, fourth. The zero with element of the ordinals is first. 
then second. Well, this can be useful if you want to say the word first. Let's do that. We're going to have four players, and we're going around four times, and the first player is player zero, and ordinals of zero is first, so we're going to say first player, and then we'll report the hand. We'll call deal poker hand. That's going to give us a list of cards that are in the hand, and we'll comma separate them. We do that four times, so here we see we have the output. Maybe the most interesting thing is the deal poker hand itself, that function. Here comes in that shuffle deck, and by default I want five cards, so that's what we're getting. Now my hand is going to be the list comprehension where I am going to pop a card five times. That means I'm going to have five randomly selected cards because the shuffle deck is shuffled. They've been popped out and returned. So we have that list of those five cards, but those five cards are now missing from the deck. I return hand, but I do not have to return the shuffle deck because of the miracle of mutability. All labels upon one list see the same list, so anything that happens to it is seen by all the identifiers, including down here, the deck now is missing those five. Well, that's how that happened. Well, give the exercises a try, and I'll see you when you're done.